stood all things in life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'd like to share with you a story that I read. A story is about a man who was having a tough week and he decided to go out for a drive. And he was just driving around the back roads near his town when he came upon a car. It was a Mercedes that was stranded on the side of the road. And as he approached the car, he could see that there was an older lady that was there. And he sensed that she needed help. So he stopped his old Pontiac near the Mercedes and got out. He smiled while he was approaching her because she looked worried. The woman looked intently at him as he approached her. She thought to herself, he does not look safe. His appearance was so poor and shabby. The man understood how frightened she was, so he tried to calm her fears. He looked at her and he said, don't worry, I'm here to help. My name is Brian Anderson. He could see that the tire was flat, and so he took the, out the spare and went about changing it. When the job was done, the woman reached into her purse to pull out her wallet and asked him, how much do I owe you for your help? Brian smiled and said, if you really want to pay me back, the next time that you see someone who needs help, give that person the needed assistance and think of me. The woman smiled warmly and said, Thank you, Brian. I appreciate your kindness. I need one more thing. I'm lost. Can you tell me how to get back to the highway? So he gave her directions. She went off driving down the road, and she came to the intersection where he had told her to make a left to get on the highway. She decided she was hungry, and she saw a cafe. And so she thought she'd go in for a quick dinner. She walked into the place and looked around. It wasn't elegant at all, but people were there, and she sat down to eat. Her waitress was a young lady who was nearly eight months pregnant. And as she served her that day, the waitress had this sweet, friendly smile and chatted happily with her during her meal. It was clear to the lady that the young waitress was working to make ends meet. And she wondered what her life was really like. And then she remembered Brian. And she knew that she had an opportunity to pay forward his kindness. So when the waitress brought the check, she gave her a $100 bill. And when the waitress came back with the change, the woman was nowhere to be found. He had left a note on the napkin that said, I don't need the change. You keep it. Use it for your family. As the waitress was cleaning the table, she realized that it wasn't only the change that the woman had left, because there were four more $100 bills laying there. Scripture tells us over and over again that God gave. God gave. He gave his only son. He gives us life. He gives us blessings. And to this day, he continues to give each and every day of our lives. Our lives are a gift from God who loves us. As Christians, we are called to live that truth and to respond to God's giving to us with giving of our own. Today's Gospel, Mark tells a wonderful story of giving. Mark is a marvel when it comes to storytelling. He's a magician with words who squeezes a novel into just a paragraph or two. His skill is nowhere more evident than in his account of the widow with the two coins at the temple treasury. It is a gem of a short story. He makes it so easy for us 
to visualize the woman as she waits patiently in line to drop her offering into the chest through the trumpet-shaped tube. Without going to a detailed character study, he makes us feel that she truly is worthy of our profound faith, our profound admiration and respect. But consider another image. Consider the image of Jesus. Jesus sitting opposite the place where the offerings were put, observing the people who made their donations as they came into the temple. He's not alone. Seated with him are the leaders, the Sadducees. It is startling to think of Jesus sitting with the men whom he scorned for hypocrisy. Remember that as they watch, there is no paper money. So all the offerings make a terrible noise as they roll down that little horn-shaped object and fall into the, into the pool of coins at the bottom. And then here comes this little old lady. She has two small coins, really worth nothing. And she drops them in. They barely make a noise. You can almost see the temple leaders as they roll their eyes and hope for better results with the next person who walks in the door. To the Sadducees, the woman is a waste of time. But to Jesus, she is the stuff that kingdoms are erected on. Thus, at the heart of the story of the woman's might is a strong reminder to the kingdoms of this world. It is a lesson that we need to take to heart, a lesson that we should resonate from the core of our very being. The lesson is this. The kingdom of God is built by everyone, the wealthy as well as the poor. Let me point out something from this text that should be obvious. Jesus was watching people give, and he saw in the woman real faith, real trust, and real sacrifice. The widow did not give for recognition or praise. She gave because she knew that giving was what God expected. Whether rich or poor, we must recognize that one of the fundamental tenets of Christian faith is giving. As our story today illustrates, it's giving, not just of our finances, but also earnest giving of our time and talent, giving to others, giving to everyone that we meet. Mother Teresa once said, it's not what you give, it's not how much you give, but it's how much love you put into giving. Think about that, how much love you put into giving. It tells us that the happiest people are not those that are getting, but those that are giving. The widow in the temple understood that, and Jesus used her actions, her faith, as a teachable moment. Scripture tells us, calling the disciples together, Jesus pointed and said, look at that widow. Take a good, hard look. She was the kind of person the world ignores, because she had so little. Yet she was the kind of person Jesus noticed because she gave so much. Perhaps he saw in her something of what he'd always tried to get his followers to see. Here was a woman who refused to play it safe, and Jesus never played it safe. She did not, could not, hold anything back from God, and neither could he. She gave away all that she had, and in the Gospel of Mark, within a few days of leaving that temple, Jesus would give everything away. Look at her, he said. Take a good hard look, because her sacrifice is a picture of what you're going to see God do in me. I read a quote from a pastor. Here's what it says. Charity is not something that we want to do. Not some means toward an end. Rather, Charity is an obligation, 
laid upon us by the nature of God. We are charitable because we have learned that this is the way the world is now that God has entered through Jesus Christ. We are not charitable in order to rid ourselves of guilt, since we know we are guilty, and that our guilt is not rid through acts of purity. Rather, we are charitable because it is in being charitable that we are most like the loving God that has been so charitable to us. So what is our lesson today? What is Christ trying to tell us through this gospel passage? For me, it's simple. Commitment beyond calculation. That's what God shows us in Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Think about this whenever we celebrate the Eucharist. In the middle of the prayer of consecration, we pause, and we recite the central mystery of our faith. We say, Christ has died. He's given everything he had, all he had to live on. And we say, Christ is risen. He gives us the power to stand free from all the false attachments of this world. And then we say, Christ will come again. He will complete the generous act that he has begun. That is the truth. We know it in our hearts. We profess it in our faith. In our Savior, Jesus Christ, we have seen a God who gives us his very life and conquers death for us. To this day, God continues to give us the gift of life so that we can become the kind of people who give our lives for others. And as he's waiting, God will do anything he can to get our attention. Commitment beyond calculation. That's what God in Christ is watching for. The Lord has been so generous in providing every gift that we need Every day he watches to see what we do with what he has given us. We could learn something from this nameless widow whom we hear about every stewardship season. She did not merely give her money. Instead, she first pledged her heart to God, and the money went with it. Those two coins that the widow placed in the temple treasury were everything that she had. She gave freely because she trusted in the love of God and his promise to walk with her and care for her every day of her life. That's what we are called to, giving. Giving of ourselves. Giving of our hearts, our minds, and our souls. That night, the waitress came home earlier than normal. As she walked in the front door, she was thinking about that woman at the restaurant and the money that she left. She was wondering how it could be that she, that she knew how much she needed the money, especially now with the baby due and the rent not paid. She walked into the living room, she smiled, knowing that her good news would re relieve her husband's worry. Of course, he had told her in typical fashion that everything was going to be okay, that he was going to take, take care of everything. She knew in her heart that he was quietly carrying the burden. She walked up to him and she showed him the money, and then she kissed him and whispered, now, my darling, everything will be all right. I love you, Brian Anderson. Today, we, as Christians, are called to give. To give of our hearts, our minds, and our souls to God's kingdom. Today, we are called to give without calculation. Today, we are called to reach out to those we encounter in love and in charity. To be sure, our giving can be monetary. But Jesus lets us know today what he really wants. And what he really wants is the gift of us. 
the question that we have to ask ourselves is this. Can I really give myself totally to God? Can I trust in Him only? Can I make a commitment beyond calculation? Can I give as I receive? Jesus is watching. How will you respond? Amen. Amen.